We finally got the unique sorcerer chess piece, Raymond of the Infinite. And you guys are right, this chess piece is amazing. I put teleport back on my bar, as you can see there. We're also using Inferno. We are sucking everything in and just burning it down with AoE. And I'm going to show you an uncut solo run of a Nightmare 32 dungeon that we just completed easy peasy in about eight minutes. I'm just gonna commentate through the entire thing. These enemies are level 86 and I am level 78. You shouldn't really be doing Nightmare Dungeons this high, I don't think anyways. And I've been told by everybody that at level 90, Sorcerer's gonna fall off, Sorcerer has an issue, Sorcerer has a problem. And so I am hoping to prove that wrong when I get there. However, I'm not gonna spam the same dungeon over and over just to get XP. So I'll get there when I get there. But let's take a look at this dungeon run together. You can see the modifiers up here. So they're doing shadow. They have lifesteal. Um, if they attack you from a distance, they can disable your healing potion and evade pushes enemies back. So we don't really have any positives for us, <laughs> really. And not too many bad effects from them. So this dungeon, they're level 86. I was a little worried here in the beginning when I saw the boars running towards me, the chargers. Those guys are absolutely deadly. And you can see, I'm like, okay, well, I thought at the beginning of this dungeon, well, okay, maybe I shouldn't be at this level. Maybe I should knock it down a couple pegs and go back in. But once we get our footing here, there we go. You can see the initial pull in, so good. But I was a little nervous because there were a lot of wildlife guys and I feel like the bears and the boars can be really brutal. But we're going into it anyway. You can see you just teleport in, sucks them all in, stuns them, and then you can throw that inferno on top. You can throw a frost nova. You can do any one of the numerous uh, CCs that the sorcerer has. It's really nice. We're also doing a lot of damage. We're pretty much clearing out these enemies pretty good, even when we don't have our suck. <laughs> We're doing all right. The porcupine was a was kind of a bigger elite dude. Oh, hello. I don't know what that was. But yeah, pretty easy peasy. Then this happens, which uh, that is like the worst thing in these Nightmare Dungeons, in my opinion, is the fact that the enemies will literally just spawn on top of you. If you don't have some kind of like get out of jail free card, you really can't do anything about it. And on Sork, I feel like we run into that a lot where we don't really want to be that close. But sometimes it just, you just can't help it. So for that, I have spec'd into, ooh, that was such a nice group up. I almost lost my life there. Oh, and all the enemies spawn. Okay, this was like probably the sketchiest part of this whole dungeon. <laughs> but you can see I just ran through them. I was trying to get them immovable, but I don't think I got anybody. But we've got a few different ways to get out. And I think I'm probably gonna add another aspect as I get up into higher levels. We'll see how it goes. But number one, we've got the teleport in, which stuns enemies. There we've got, so we've got the teleport in that stuns enemies. We've got the flame shield that immobilizes them and allows you to move through them. Because one of the issues that I was facing was that I would teleport in, suck them all in together, and then I couldn't get out because they were body blocking me. And so unless I had my freeze, I was kind of screwed. But with the flame shield, you can pop that and freely move out of the way. I've also noticed that with ice shards, if you're too close and into like inside of the enemy, your ice shards won't hit them. So you kind of have to group up, take a step back, and then shoot into the group. I was kind of wondering if that shiny shrine was going to be something for the dungeon, but then I thought maybe it's just something for an event and I really didn't want to be spawning events in a nightmare dungeon that was over leveled. <laughs> a lot of these tree guys as well, which these tree guys are crazy. If they hit you, if they smack you, it's 
pretty big smack. But we took care of them pretty easily. You can see also that I'm popping potions a lot because I want to always make sure to stay healthy because I have a huge damage boost. I think it's something like 50% when I'm healthy. Also, sometimes when you teleport, you don't really know where you're going. You're just like off screen, going into an off screen somewhere. I don't know if that's just like a, if that's a um, controller thing or not. I almost killed myself with a barrel there, but okay. So we got these big boys. Pop my ult down, try to get them kind of stunned inside of it. I also have the aspect that where you deal more damage to stun. Frost Nova helps. Try not to get tricked by any of this stuff around if it's a event or not. I did pick up the channeling one. Luckily it was not an event, so I didn't have to deal with that. And there was a lot going on up here, so the channeling shrine was perfect because I could pop my ults and prop pop my frost nova, and then I get my frost nova back almost immediately, and I can just keep going in. So that one's really nice for the cooldown. Of course. In general, you want to have a lot of cooldown on Sork, and I've actually swapped out some of my mana regen for cooldown because the CC is almost more important than shooting them with ice shards constantly. And you are going to kind of go back and forth so you can hear my chick say I'm not ready yet a million times in this dungeon because I'm used to just always having mana. <laughs> I said, ooh, I better wait. Get my mana up there, freeze them, done. Figuring out where the hell I need to go in this dungeon. Not looking and getting caught in a trap. <laughs> Lots of name dudes, freeze, burn them down. The freeze pop is really great, which is one of the reasons, oh geez, that was a big, that's a big boar guy. One of the reasons why you want that cooldown, because if you can't CC or get your barrier up or freeze, I almost died there from just the drive-by. I don't even think he hit me, it was just the, the drive-by. So the thunder crashing titan along the way there. But group them up, burn them down. Because of my cooldown on all my gear, I actually get my ultimate, the inferno ultimate, in 35 seconds. So that's a really, really good. The teleport also comes back based on the number of enemies you hit. So you hit a bunch and you can see we've got an eight second cooldown. Oh, I didn't know you could actually destroy those traps. That's good to know. Okay, so I popped my Inferno ultimate there on nothing. I meant to put it on this group of enemies, but whether it was the controller issue or I hadn't fully turned around yet in the game's mind, because I like to kind of like run away, do flicks. So, you know, it went in the wrong way. So we probably could have cleared this area a little bit faster, but our ultimate decided to just go on to nothing. Sometimes it goes on to boxes. It's great. If you play with mouse and keyboard, you'll have a better time with, <laughs> with all of this, I'm sure. But it works pretty well for me. I was scared that Barrow was going to just instantly go. Okay. Pause for a second just to get ready because I was worried there were a lot of named guys there. Here, I was fighting for my life, <laughs> trying to get out. And that's it. And then we go down into the boss area. Bramble, level 86. Teleport past there. Get him in the back a little bit. Get him nice and vulnerable. Run around. I don't really remember this boss very much, so I'm kind of like, okay, there's lots of ads. We can stun them. All that good stuff. I unload all my mana on him. And then we pop Inferno. And that's it. That's the end of the Nightmare Dungeon. 
Nightmare Dungeon, Wraith Winds, tier 32, level 86 enemies. I'm level 78. This is the build that I'm running. I'll go over it real quick so you can see that Flame Shield, Damage Wall Barrier, Elite Barrier. We are running Asus Heirloom, which gives us more crit strike chance. You can see we have 35% base and 100% crit strike damage. I'd like to get that number up a little bit. We've got Immobilized Thunder Frozen, Ice Shards, Pierce, Avalanche Key Passive, which is helping me do a little bit more damage and keeping my mana up. And then we've got Vulnerable while you have a barrier. One of these, probably this one, I'd like to put for the cooldowns giving mana because I do find myself out of mana a lot more with this setup, but that's what we're running. Here's the quick skill tree. It's not too different from what we we're running before in my previous video but you can see we've got ice shards we've got glass cannon the the chest piece gives you one to glass cannon and i already had four so we have actually seven out of three in glass cannon which is absolutely insane i put five out of five into frost nova i'd love to get some more points into it but this is the basics and that's it i just want to make a quick video showing you guys the chest piece in action to show you the unique chest. Hopefully you guys can get one for yourselves. Also, I'm running a giveaway for an ultimate edition of Diablo 4 on PC. So if you want to enter, come on over to twitch.tv slash Abby Hour. I'm going to be streaming all this week and I'm going to pull the winner on Saturday. So you have plenty of time to enter, but make sure you come over and check out the stream, earn that XP and buy some tickets. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.